Hello my castaways, and welcome back to another Stranded Deep Speedrun. No long intro this time, we're just going to get right into it. This is the much requested, glitchless, fixed seed, normal difficulty speedrun. So taking a look at our map, this is the same map that we use for our glitches allowed speedrun, and the reason for that is because we need this to be as tight a world as possible so we don't have to cross as much distance as we would on another world. We don't have access to our speed walking glitch, so things are going to be a bit slower. Now, before we get started, and while I have you captive here on these loading screens, I want to ask your guys' opinion on checking out some new survival games. So, I've been getting a lot of recommendations on games to check out, and I've been playing a whole lot of The Long Dark. I'm probably going to put out a series soon on The Long Dark that involves playing uh, through the story mode and doing some survival mode stuff, and maybe even some speedruns. But, before that, I want to explore some new survival games for the first time with you guys. I haven't checked out either of these yet, besides a few minutes of gameplay videos, so whatever happens will be a surprise for both of us. Both of these games were initially released about a year ago, both are survival games, and both are in an early access demo state. So I'm thinking about checking out Star Sand, which from what I heard is, is similar to Stranded Deep, except you're lost in the desert instead of an ocean. It also has some really incredible graphics, which is what really caught my eye. And the other game is Salvage, which is a space-themed horror survival game and is nothing like Stranded Deep. So what sets it apart from other survival games is that each playthrough, the layout of the ship and the items within are randomized. So uh, yeah, let me know if you guys are interested in seeing either of those and hopefully we'll find a cool new game and maybe be able to find some really interesting glitches. Alright, enough of that, let's get on with the run. Alright, we're spawning in, and as per any type of speedrun, we're going to get everything up out of this raft, and then we're going to swim around to the different shipwrecks around the island, and collect up our crates and see what we're working with. It's pretty much the same as a uh, glitches allowed speedrun, we're still going to want at least one jerry can, uh, all three would be great, so we don't have to go searching through wrecks, but uh, one way that this is different than the glitches allowed speedrun is that I need a lot more lashes and a lot more cloth so that I can make my ship, uh, my raft, for going off to the bosses. And not just that, I also need more um, cloth and lashes to make bandages because I can't duplicate my bandages like I would do in a glitches allowed speedrun, obviously, since that's a glitch. So I need to have more of those on hand so that I have more wiggle room if I get bitten by those bosses. If you're new to Stranded Deep and you're just checking out this uh, channel or speedruns or just checking out gameplay in general to see if you want to buy it, uh, the basic idea is that you're trying to escape these islands. Now, in order to do that, you have to find the uh, giant carrier ship that has a plane on it, which you use to escape, but you have to repair the plane, refuel it, and also stock it with food and water for yourself to escape. Now, uh, for some unexplained reason, the way to get the plane parts to fix the plane is that you have to kill these gigantic bosses and, I guess, make the plane parts from their bones or something? I'm not really sure what the logic behind that is, but that's what you gotta do. Now, in order to get the fuel that you'll need to fly the plane off of the ship, you need to collect up eight different potatoes that you can find growing on these islands around the map. You need a minimum of eight potatoes to make enough fuel, and then you have to also build a stand to distill that fuel into gas. Pretty sure it's vodka, but we'll call it gas just for, you know, propriety's sake. As for the food and water, you'll need uh, ten portions of food and ten portions of water to escape. Now, what I generally do for my food is just chop up a couple coconuts, get 10 coconut halves, and pop those in the crate. That is the absolute easiest way to fulfill the food requirement for escaping. You can also go about that in a couple different ways. You can kill things and use a refined knife to harvest meat off of it, and then cook that uh, to put it in the crates. You actually don't even need to cook it. You can put raw meat or spoiled meat in there, and it still fulfills that requirement. There are also a couple different types of fruit, kura and kwawa, that you can find on different bushes around pretty much any island in the map. Uh, those are not best to be used on the ending ship because they will only count towards food there, while if you eat them, they will also give you a slight bit of water. And it's the same thing for the rations that you saw me pull out of the starting ship or that you will find in the crates around the shipwrecks. Those will fill nearly half of your food and water bar, so much better to eat those instead of use those for escaping. Water is kind of the same deal, there's a couple different ways you can go about it. 
The quickest way that I've found to easily make 10 portions of water is just to collect up 10 coconuts and then turn those into 10 coconut flasks and that lets you get water without having to make a still, which is what you would generally make to put fibrous leaves or palm fronds under to, I guess, dehydrate those and collect the water from. And then you can put those into an empty coconut flask or a water skin made from leather or a water bottle made from clay. So that's Speedy Deep's speedy explanation of stranded deep. All right, all I've been doing so far is getting all the junk out of the crates that I don't need and reorganizing and relabeling them so that I can access them quickly without having to you know, search around through crates. I'm also killing these crabs to try and get hunter XP because with more hunter levels we can do more damage per spear uh, on the bosses, which is very important because we do not have the safety of glitches to hide behind while fighting these. A lot of this first day is just going to be running around and collecting up all the resources that we can on this single island. Uh, that and making a whole bunch of spears. Because, like I said, since we don't have the glitches to fall back on, uh, we can't chase bosses around and just hit them with the same spear or our axe like I would do on a glitches allowed run. Not only that, but I can't glitch Luska out by going underneath his buoy chain and making it really easy for me just to safely chuck spears at him. I have to either stay up on my raft or jump in the water with him and try to evade his uh, very, very fast attacks from within the water while chucking spears at him. So with that in mind, we're probably going to need a few extras because I'm probably going to miss a few spear throws and I want to be a little bit safer on this run than I would with a Witch's Allowed run. Got more time, there's no reason we can't hedge our bets just a little bit. So my crate plan got a little messed up from my last uh, glitchless speed run. Uh, I usually have a crate for like, you know, two crates for spears and then a crate for food and sticks, but there's only six crates on this island, so I kind of had to set aside some more for spears and then if I lost this crates or whatever, I just had to wait until the next island to get new crates. Luckily I didn't lose any, um, that was a problem with some previous runs where, you know, dropping stuff off of uh, boss structures and then just falling to the bottom of the ocean. And uh, I'm not going to go try and get stuff off the bottom of the ocean in a glitchless run. That's just insanity. I'm going to need every single fibrous leaf on this island to uh, have enough bandages and uh, enough lashings to make my ship because uh, I'm going to need like six at least to be able to make sure that I don't die from getting bitten by the boss so many times, I guess, where I'm going. If I had had extra leather, I would have definitely made uh, a refined spear, um, just, to, just to have one little spear that did a little bit more damage. But I only had three on this island, so I needed to make this refined axe since it takes so much time to chop uh, all these trees up. And uh, the other two I needed for my pickaxe for getting clay. Uh, I suppose I could have made two refined spears instead of the pickaxe and then just made the pickaxe later. But as I said in my glitchless runs, I just forget that stuff up, that stuff, the clay, all the time. So I really just wanted to get it out of the way and be able to forget about it. Obviously, since I'm making so many spears, uh, crafting levels to make the fuel still are just not a problem at all. I'm gonna blast right through crafting levels, not have to worry about it a bit. Same for harvesting. In fact, by the end of this, or I think even on this island, I get down to being uh, at two chops for every uh, every tree that's not like a palm tree, every ficus. I 
I have those three fibrous leaves, uh, and I, I know there's one lashing hiding around on this island, or one lashing, one fibrous leaf left that I haven't hit because uh, I was able to make one extra in some of my other runs, but I don't know if I, I can't remember if I ended up looking around for that one little uh, fibrous leaf or not, but it's there. Um, clay always shows up on the southern or the eastern sides of islands, or kind of like in that quadrant of islands. So if you're ever looking for clay, go to the south to the eastern side, and you'll be able to find it. I don't know why that mechanic exists, but it seems to be on pretty much any island that has clay. It's always on the uh, southern or eastern side of it. Swing and a miss. Um, one commenter uh, told me that if you chop the palm end of the uh, tree, it actually takes like two less chops per tree. And uh, that, that does save me a little bit of time. So thank you. I think it was like, I think his name was Steve or something. Sorry if I don't remember it right. But uh, yeah, that's a good tip. Thank you very much. Luckily, there's some really, really big palm trees, so... I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter how many I chop down, but... Uh, it just seems less cumbersome to chop down giant ones, I guess. Yeah, it was bothering me. Uh, user Steve Mize. So I think that's how you say his name. He's the one who found out that, uh, or enlightened me about that little tip. And uh, he's got a few uh, glitches he showed me on that he uploaded on his YouTube. So if you guys are interested in seeing some really weird glitches, just go check it out. He's got a couple videos on there. <laughs> My guy was born to be a lumberjack. Between all the axe chopping and spear throwing and everything else, and pickaxe hitting and stuff like that, this guy's gotta be so unbalanced. Like, giant right arm like a blacksmith or something, and then, or is that the right one? Either way. One giant arm and one arm that just uh, <laughs> aims for him, I guess. Alright, we're building our raft. In earlier runs, I wasn't building a raft if I didn't have a hammer, because I couldn't. And uh, then I'd be able to use those cloth for extra bandages, but I certainly prefer to have uh, a raft and extra bandages. That just makes it a whole lot easier. This tiny raft, man, I had so much trouble this run getting this thing to flip back over. I'm usually able to just, like, do that thing right there, and they, they usually just pop right up uh, when, where they're supposed to, in the right position, but I tried it, like, a dozen times this, uh, this run from in and from outside the water, and I just <laughs> kept on failing.
Yeah, I think I dropped my hammer back there. I still have the uh, drop item key uh, bound to my right click mouse, uh, right click mouse, right click button on my mouse. Uh, since they still haven't fixed the uh, item dropping glitch that happened, so uh, it's kind of dangerous. I, I might drop my uh, compass or something just by hitting the wrong button, and uh, I really need to fix that and switch it back to Q. Wasted kindling there. I actually thought I was going a little overboard on how many spears I made, but I ended up having to make even more after uh, Luska and Avia bosses, which are our first two bosses that we'll be going to. There was one run, a uh, glitchless run that I was doing where I actually made too many bandages before I made my raft, and I had a hammer to make the raft. Um, so I ended up having to do this weird, like, switching off thing where uh, I would break down my shelter for the lashing and then make a, I think I either had to make a sail or a rudder, make a sail or a rudder out of the uh, lashing. And then whenever I got back from the bosses, I had to break down the part of my raft to build the shelter and then do the same thing over again when I wanted to leave in the morning. It was, it's kind of a neat trick, but it's uh, a little unwieldy. I also, uh, on runs that where I didn't have enough cloth, um, but I had extra lashings, uh, if I... <laughs> If I took the lashings with me, I could actually break down uh, either my sail or my rudder to turn it into a bandage, but then I would be left without my uh, my ship since it wouldn't be able to move. So uh, it's kind of a last resort thing if I was like doing really good on time or something, but luckily that didn't happen this run either. Just fumbling around with coconuts in the dark, man. I just wanted to top up my water there so I had everything at full health. Uh, if I got tipped over by a shark on the way to the boss and get bitten, I just want to be able to heal without even having to think about it. Which is also uh, it's another good thing that I got all those rations that uh, I had like six, I think, uh, whenever I picked up all the crates. And that's great because what I like to do is eat one of those rations right after killing one of the bosses. That way I got time to heal before I get to the next one. Assuming it gets me to full health and our full food and water. All right, let's go off to the Abia, see how he's doing. Let's get ourselves oriented. I know that the avia is at like 195 degrees, so all I'm doing is just trying to line up my compass with a uh, point on the horizon, and uh, then line up or line up my view dot, I guess, with a point on the horizon. Because if I'm on my rudder, your view doesn't like wobble around or anything, and then I can line it up with the uh, mast of my sail, and then I know if I'm off course or not, if it drifts. had a lot of trouble deciding between uh, swimming or sailing since <laughs> if you swim long enough in the game, like in one of these speedruns, your physicality will level up to the point where you actually can swim just slightly faster than your raft. So I was really torn between swimming or sailing, but after so many runs where I got hit by these sharks, which you can hear the music for now, uh, I decided that I should like I said, edge my bets and get a sail. <laughs> I 
I said get a sail. I meant get a raft. You know what I'm talking about. So, an interesting note about the music, uh, you know, you hear the, the ominous tones in the background, that means it's a hostile shark. Now, sometimes the music will go out and you just hear, like, that swimming sound, and that can either be a marlin or a whale shark, which are actually not uh, hostile to you if you're on a raft. The whale shark isn't hostile ever, the marlin will uh, try and stab you if you get in the water. I, I don't know if it's if you get in the water or if you attack it first, but he will to try and stab you. Whale sharks just run away. Trying to angle my raft here into this little corner here because if you get it just right, you can kind of wedge your raft in between this bent pole and like the lip of the, um, I don't know, whatever this like structure is. That, you see that little lip on the bottom, you can kind of get it wedged in there. Um, I don't think I actually did it, but I think the motion of the waves uh, got it in place after I uh, <laughs> decided not to screw around with it anymore. And I'll also pop down a few crates around the raft just to... I don't know if it actually helps secure it on there, but it makes me feel better about it, so... Alright, screw it. And I've learned to shut up during boss fights, so if I don't have to say anything, I won't, and uh, you won't have to struggle to hear me. So. Yeah. Abia really is, um, I think, the easiest boss just because you can hang out in this uh, giant ship structure and he can't he can't bite you. <laughs> Every now and then he'll glitch and he'll get through, but it's pretty rare. So I'm gonna try and kill him over the boss structure so I can get all these spears back. But if you're too far down on the boss structure, he doesn't like to come over it. And then I got bit. So, a little faux pas. And I really didn't like the idea of getting bitten again, so I just decided to end it. <laughs> and they all ricocheted off into the deep. So, that was great. Yeah. Really pushed it very close there on the breath. 
There's no like health depletion thing. Like once you get to that like out of breath state where it's like almost a dark screen, you just die. And uh, I was probably less than a second away from dying right there. Look at that. I am so strong, I could throw a spear into a metal ship. <laughs> now, I'm trying to pick up the ship, the, the ship and it's like super lodged in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, one run, I actually could not get the ship to come out of there and I just had to abandon it. And if you look off in the distance, you can see uh, just barely... Oh, you guys may not be able to actually with the resolution, but uh, you might be able to see the uh, Luska boss structure out there, just, just barely. Hey, speaking of islands and boss structures, Strain of Deep and all that, I want to give a shout out to uh, my man, Michael Rukowski. He's one of the people, one of the many people who sent me seed numbers to check out, and his by far is like the best that I got sent uh, since my run. So here, I'll pop it up on the screen. Look at this uh, super tight world. It's just everything's really close together. I don't know if I'm going to be able to use it. I don't, I haven't scouted anything out yet, but still, thank you very much, Mike. That is a super big help. If anybody else wants to send me some really good looking seeds and get a shout out uh, in one of my later videos, feel free to. You can tweet them to me or you can just send them to me, uh, leave them in YouTube comments, whatever. I'll, I'll look at all of them, I promise. I think this is where the goblin shark shows up. Yeah, yeah, right there. Uh, this guy would not leave me alone this, like, whole time. I mean, it's probably not the same goblin shark, but uh, there were goblin sharks on my tail this entire run. And those are, I don't know if this is actually a mechanic of the game, but those always seem to be the ones that knock me over the most. Those and great whites. So uh, I was really pissed at this shark at the end of the run. Yeah. So, uh, I had been running glitchless runs for like four hours at this point, so you could probably guess what I had to go do real quick. Yeah. I figured it would be best to get that out of the way before my Luska fight, since Luska is like the one linchpin part that gets me killed the most in all of these runs. So uh, here's an easy part I could shave, what, 30 seconds off of? <laughs> yeah. Kind of the same trick as over at the Avia boss structure. I'm just going to get him, get this raft up on top of the buoy and try and get it in a stable spot so it's not going to fall off. Uh, if a storm happens or something, I'm screwed. That thing is going to float away no matter where it is. Um, even lodged in that boss structure, the waves will the waves will pop it up out of there. Your raft can only go so far underneath the water, even with every glitch I've tried. I've never been able to get a raft more than like a foot under the water, so. So the height of the waves will pop it up. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm being really bad about it. Eating up. Got to be full health for this guy. I 
probably did a good 25 attempts. Some of them only a couple minutes, some of them longer than 45. And man, this boss fight just makes me so damn nervous. Just throw creative spears at him, do all the damage at once, wouldn't that be great? That would definitely be a glitch though. So all I'm trying to do is, whenever he starts coming at me, I hit sprint and then I swim upward. And usually you can get above him. Um, especially if you end up jumping out of the water. Uh, that's not a glitch, that is an intended mechanic. Uh, and <laughs> it's very handy. Yeah, so <sighs> this boss fight's a little nauseating, to be honest, because I just gotta, I gotta do so much uh, janking up and down, getting out of his way. All in all though, this was one of the best Lusca fights that I ended up having on any of my attempted runs. Uh, I was really starting to get the method down. It's just this part whenever I have to switch out crates and pick up spears and stuff that always screws me up because I'm really focused on trying not to get hit. And uh, it's very hard to tell where he's coming from if you're not looking at him. So if, uh, if, I'm, not looking, if I'm not looking in the direction of the buoy, uh, I basically can't swim towards it. Saved the bandage by getting bitten twice in a row and not using one, so I guess that's good. But then it also doesn't allow me to heal as much. If I use both those bandages, I'd be more full on health than uh, just using one of those right now. So. Really trying not to have to go back to that buoy and get bit another time. And I'm just trying to grab one spear off him because he's so close to die dead. <laughs> Whoops. Almost lost the whole crate. <laughs> See, I don't think this was very fair, because Luska clearly wasn't on the glitchless run, uh, you know, mentality. He was just swimming around low on health. Uh, no health. Just not caring at all about my glitchless run, so... about leaving those crates and thought better of it since uh, I don't want to have to empty out more crates to fill them with food and sticks and stuff. Might as well use two empty crates that I got sitting right here. So that basically took us the entire day. Um, yeah, it's almost nightfall again. We might have a little bit of time to do a couple of things to get ready for uh, the Meg trip. The uh, Meg boss fight and then the trip to the other islands, but yeah, those two bosses, getting there uh, and then getting back to the islands took an entire day. Yeesh.
Hey, the whale. Actually, I was trying to keep an eye on him while we were coming in. Oh yeah, I'm waving to him. <laughs> Um, I was trying to keep an eye on him. I think he like glitches out or just disappears because I could not spot him after uh, he dips under the water there. Yeah, I think he just glitched out when the island rendered because like he's just gone now. I like this song a lot. Probably my favorite Stranded Deep uh, music theme. Real seafaring tones, notes, or something like that. <laughs> Landing man. I'm uh, getting my ship ready to go for in the morning because if it's uh, too dark in the morning, I just want it to be able to get on it and then, or rather, drag it out to water, then get on it and just send it off on its way instead of trying to figure out which side of the island I need to get to. <laughs> the sail uh, got caught on those giant trees, so I couldn't go through the center of the island. Probably just barely see Meg out there. Collect up my coconuts for the food now and get some extra spears for sticks. I guess I'm gonna rehydrate myself first. Again, Steve, that was actually a really, really good tip. leaving this island for good, so tearing this down to get the lashing. That probably actually takes more chops than hitting a yucca tree twice and just crafting it. Hmm. Never really thought about that.
took me quite a while to get into the groove of uh, walking at normal speed again. After playing so many glitches allowed runs and just flying around at light speed, uh, man, these first couple glitchless runs felt so slow. We are ready to get off to the next island. Or no, not the island. Uh, Meg the boss. Grabbing some spears uh, in case I get uh, messed with by any sharks. Random seed run, man. Uh, you know, Luska buoy, no problem. You can see that. Megbot structure, a little difficult. You can kind of see it if it's not stormy. But the Abia, man, you gotta be so close to that thing to uh, be able to see it. I'm really worried about the uh, finding that guy on the random world seed run. Random, <laughs> random seed speed run. Damn it. Getting my bandages and stuff out before I get to the boss structure of Meg, just because, uh, you know, she can jump over it and start attacking you, or to knock you off of it, actually. And uh, I really don't want to deal with that. That goblin shark's back, man. Should give him a damn bell. So I'm gonna try and get the raft to kind of go up the tail of this whale that Meg is eating. Um, <laughs> it, it fails a lot of times when I try it, but this one actually went really well. Yeah, I barely had to screw with it at all. Just like kind of pull it up on there. <laughs> and Meg decided to green one. That wasn't me jumping out of the water, by the way. That was her knocking me out of the water. I feel like my early ga Meg game on this was just like so rough. I don't, I don't know what was going on with me. I just could not get it, get it down. 
All those crates in my inventory are messing me up. Trying to just get a spear back. There's no more in that crate, and I didn't want to mess around with them in my inventory. But I did not expect that to uh, that kill to happen right there. Um, I guess since Luska, you know, lived past his health bar a little bit, Meg died a little before hers or something like that. I'll take it though. Yeah, I'm happy. All those bosses done. It's uh, not an easy thing to accomplish on a glitchless speedrun. Now I have to rush a little bit because I still don't have any potatoes and I really want to try and get everything distilled before the uh, before nightfall today so I can sleep through the distillation and uh, just wake up and go right off to the ending ship. A um, couple runs that I was trying to do, I wasn't able, or that I tried before this, I wasn't able to achieve that and I ended up having to uh, like sleep through the night and then trying to distill the fuel and then like standing around for 15 minutes and uh, had one where it was like an hour and 45 minutes. I just wasn't happy enough with that time. And then another one where I was like an hour and 30 minutes, but uh, I left the fuel on the island before the ending ship, so it turned into like a two hour run because I had to go back and forth between the ending ship and that island, and it was just terrible. Hey, Goblin Boy's back. thinking I'd pull out a spear to uh, hit him with, but no go. I can't drop crates on a moving ship. That's not going to work out well. And I'm not willing to lose any of those quite yet.
All right, let's just maneuver this ship in between these uh, little sandbars and get it lined up for going off to the next island. It's probably faster for me to actually run and carry the ship, but it's a lot easier for me to just sail it over here like this. So I don't have too much left to do. All I really need is the potatoes and the lashings for my, um, oh, what are they called? Coconut flasks. And then the sticks for the fuel still. And then I gotta put the fuel still together and still it. But, okay, so it's a little bit to do. Oh, I also still need a third jerry can. Um, or a fourth plank scrap. Yeah. Here's our survivor structure that you guys saw in the Glitches Allowed run. Super helpful. In fact, particularly helpful on this one since it has two jerry cans in it, I think. Yeah, there's those jerry cans. So happy to see that. <laughs> So all we need are making an extra bandage in case I get messed up by some sharks. All we need are lashes for coconut flasks, lashes for our fuel can, our uh, fuel still, and sticks for the fuel still. And then we can just build that stuff and sleep through the distillation. Remember, I still have those three fibrous leaves in one of my crates, so I just picked up one to finish that one off. Still need two. I don't know why I was struggling around counting those through this run too. Hence the reason I'm picking up way more coconuts than I need to. I need like three coconuts and what I'm grabbing like six, five, something like that. Look at those two chop ficus trees. That is beautiful. There was one time, a single time, that I somehow glitched that state into a crude axe on like the first, uh, uh, what's it called, harvesting level. I have never been able to replicate it, but man, if I could, that'd be a great thing to figure out from glitch, uh, glitch allowed run. Because, ooh, two sticks, uh, two chops on a ficus, that's just, that's just dirty. I'm way too excited about that. Alright, we're getting off to the next island. I don't have really all the sticks I need, but that's fine. I'm way more worried about getting those potatoes. And I'm uh, super hot from the sun right now. <laughs> but the way the day is, it just works out perfectly where the, uh, the shade for my sail is blocking me from the sun. So, that was nice. But I don't think it was late enough in the day for the sun to not affect it. Maybe it was, but 
I think the sail also works uh, to block light if you just happen to be in shadow. So. Now, it is unfortunate I didn't continue to look through any crates or wrecks in the last island because I did not realize at this point that I don't have uh, all the plank scrap I need, and uh, I'm going to have to go through searching through these wrecks on this island to actually get that plank scrap. Actually, I don't even think it's this island. I think it's the next island. We, uh, we really had to book it here. Yeah, it is the next island because this is only uh, three potatoes in. I need all eight to be able to distill that fuel in one night. I don't think I spend hardly any time on this island either. I think I just run in, grab the potatoes and lashings and get out. Which is a bit stupid because if I had realized there was a plank, uh, if I was, if I had realized I was low on a plank scrap, uh, I could have picked one up off the beach since there's one on this island. A static spawn. Precariously place my raft and then ruin this run just because I wasn't careful. I'm not even wasting time to put those lashings up, I don't think. Yeah, I'm just going off to the next island. Because I think at this point, it's going to take so much time that it's going to be dark by the time I'm there. Or close enough to dark that it doesn't matter. But I wasn't going the right way, so I'm really glad I checked that compass. <laughs> Double checking my position there, my orientation rather. Like I said, I did like 25 of these runs. I was really paranoid at this point that something was going to go wrong. I'm always paranoid that something's going to go wrong in a speed run. Alright, well, I already did this once, so I will see you guys after we get to that island.
Hey, how'd you guys enjoy the trip? Did you feel like you were alone on the raft in the dark? <laughs> Alright, so we gotta put everything down, find those potatoes, get some more sticks for our still, not lose our raft, that's very important, and uh, get the fires going, and then get the potatoes in the still, get a shelter made, and get to sleep. Now, if I don't do this uh, probably in the next like couple hours, I won't actually be able to sleep through the distillation. Uh, obviously, I do, but uh, it was a close call, kind of. Alright, we don't need that thing. Get it out of here. It's like my my triumph throw. Whenever I know I'm done with it, I don't need this crap anymore. Get the hell out of here. Couldn't get the auto crafter to pull up a firing, so. Oh, by the way, Beam Team fixed the uh, crafting, uh, quick crafting menu overlay problem, so that's not gonna happen anymore. That's sweet. Good job, Beam Team. If any of you listen to that two seconds of this entire video. <laughs> Get our little vodka balls in there. That's the scientific nerve. Uh, God damn it. It's a scientific name for potatoes. Is vodka balls? Just so you guys know, I'm a botanist. I know. Crab just disappeared, man. Like creepiest little crab. Well, big crab. I can't see him. Okay, he's dead. We're good. The fourth boss. I am looking around for a plank scrap. I couldn't remember if there was one on the beach of this island or not, and there is not. So I'm gonna have to go swimming through the wrecks at night in the dark <laughs> to get one plank scrap. Easy spa uh, easy space that I could have uh, easily dropped like four or five minutes. But it is what it is. my searching around for other potential glitchless speedruns of this, I was pretty sure there weren't any, and uh, yeah, I think this is actually the first, uh, the first glitchless speedrun of Stranded Deep. I mean, I guess you could argue that anybody who's beaten the game without using glitches has done a glitchless speedrun, but uh, I don't know. I actually set out to do one and uh, put it up on YouTube and whatnot, so it's the first one of those I found. <laughs> Everybody else who's done speedruns and put on like speedrun.com or, or something uh, before the speedwalking glitch, uh, all of them were using, uh, including myself, were using the raft physics glitch, I guess you call it, where you push something into the raft container shelf and it shoots it uh, forward. And, uh, and I was still using the, uh, the same trick with the starting raft. <laughs> I, don't, I haven't seen anybody else do that. But yeah, this should be the very first glitchless speedrun of Shrain of Deep. And I get it, I was I was talking about speedruns and the history of speedruns, and I don't even remember. If, I don't even know if I got the plank scrap. No, I'm still going out to wreck, so definitely not. Man, if I had just started going around the island a different way, uh, I would have found that plank scrap, but <laughs> instead it was in nearly the last ship that I checked. 
And there's a shark on my tail. Shark tail. And still grabbing those potatoes. A lot harder to find them in the dark. Actually, it's it's harder and easier in some ways because you don't have that peripheral vision to distract you. You're like, oh, I think I saw one, but obviously you can't see as much of the world around you. Looks like I'm just gonna pour gas on that to start it. decided to stop the curve fruit. I knew I had a full inventory. Just uh, speedy stupidity sometimes. Alright, it's almost done. Go to sleep, you fool. Oh wait, you gotta build a shelter. I think uh, a sub one hour glitchless speedrun is totally possible, but uh, it's gonna be kind of like the sub 35 uh, or sub 30 glitches allowed run. It's gonna take some streamlining, good luck, and a better seed than this one. It must have been so close to me being unable, unable to sleep right there. I should not have been screwing around with those crate inventories. Because, I mean, none of this fuel's even done yet. <laughs> I was so disappointed when I saw that. I was like, oh god, I'm going to have to wait here forever. But luckily, the, uh, it was just one quarter of the fuel that I really had to wait on. That one that had two uh, potatoes left in the still was just about ready to be done on that last second to last bar. If that makes sense. Kind of random. I'm going ahead and, uh, since I have the time, I'm going ahead and chopping up the coconuts and breaking them in half. And I'm going to go ahead and craft the plain parts too. That was another uh, comment that I got on YouTube that is saying that I should do this while I'm, uh, well, they were saying I should do that while I was waiting on the ramp to load in in my glitchless runs. But I uh, figured it'd probably be a really good opportunity to do exactly that while I'm waiting on this fuel to distill. So uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember who commented on that. Thank you very much way back in my comments so I can't look it up really quickly but um, another really good tip with the help of the community we'll get these speed runs down Shits and giggles, I just decided to make a trophy. I thought you could mount them on things, so I was gonna put it on the front of my raft, but I uh, guess you can't do that. I've never actually built a trophy once in this game. Yeah, you take that, Meg. There's half the fuel we need.
I'm not leaving without my fuel. I'm just getting the ship to a better location. And I guess there's a shark about three me uh, three centimeters out in the water. So got the music already. I decided to take those spears. Yeah, get out of here, spear crate. And that goes far. Uh, I decided to take some spears in case a uh, shark screws with me. Turned out to be a really good idea. Decided to get him off my back. I was really tired of this guy. So this is kind of the best tactic to get a shark off your tail, or like make it the easiest way to kill a shark from your wrath while you're moving. If he gets behind you and you hit him once, you'll retreat, and then you'll kind of you know do this same thing where he tries to get back to your raft. But since you're going at whatever sailing speed you are, uh, it takes him a couple seconds and gives you a couple seconds to aim. So, as long as the seas aren't too choppy, since uh, your spear throws are affected by the pitch of your raft, um, as long as that's not happening, you should be able to kill sharks that are trailing you pretty easily. Like that. Yeah, one more for good measure. I don't need any more spears. <laughs> Guess I was shaking my head at the goblin shark. Oh no, it's gonna float away. Should have strapped a crate to that thing, it could have carried some stuff around for me. And I was getting really impatient, so I just decided to sprint it. Uh, which, this should be proof that you can actually swim faster than your raft. Just the safety aspect that I needed for this run. So, maybe if I get more confident in my ability to avoid the sharks, uh, I won't need a raft on a glitchless run. One thing I didn't realize about my uh, crazy swim jumping uh, thing in the Glitch is Loud run is that it lets me skip this tiny little cutscene here. But it doesn't really matter, you can pull stuff out uh, during the cutscene, which I thought was funny. That seems like enough. Ten portions of water. Uh, 
yeah, they auto pop into your hands when you walk up to them. I didn't realize that. I think somebody had tried to tell me that, and I just wasn't hearing it. But yeah, that's a that's nice. That's still like a quick crafting menu. <laughs> Never happy. I think it's done. Yeah, I think it's done too. I don't think we're talking about the same thing. couple of actions in the game and then our timer will stop when we see the stream of deep sign at the ending end of the ending cutscene. So if you don't know, after you beat the game, you can get a uh, starting crate option on your rafts, or on your uh, game files. So uh, when you spawn in the world, you actually have two starting crates that has that little rubber ducky in it, some sunscreen, a machete, um, a spear gun, and four carbon fiber spear gun arrows. So if you guys haven't messed around with that, give it a shot. It's, uh, it's pretty fun. Spear gun's nice. Uh, Nice little bonus in the beginning, and the machete is nice too, but it breaks a lot faster than an axe, but still, uh, still a nice mechanic that they have. They have. This plane doesn't seem to, uh, doesn't seem to handle very well. I want to know what this guy's background is, why he's able to fly this plane. Like, if I got in this plane, no chance, man. I would crash that crash that thing right into the ocean. minutes and 13 seconds thanks for watching guys please like and subscribe if you enjoyed that and i'll see you again for another strain of deep speed run keep on surviving